Welcome to the Cell Guru Show. Now, we started off by trying to make this very, very melodramatic, but somehow it didn't work. The idea was this is going to be a copy of Charlie's Angels called Cell Guru Angels. There would be one, two, and a third. The problem was that the third was a guy, Samir, so he's not in the frame. And we're not Charlie's Angels, we're not Cell Guru Angels, we're just Cell Guru. We're at CBIT and plugged in in Bangalore, and we're starting off with some great stories. I'll bring you some top stories. Devika, of course, will tell you about small, tiny little phones that could really help people in distress, especially kids. And Asha, of course, will tell you all about his really fast wireless data transfer on mobile phones, and a whole lot more happening on this fantastic but not so melodramatic as we had thought Cell Guru show for this week. We wished and prayed for a brand to not die. It comes true. Nokia announces its first Android tablet. Nokia is back. We did show you a preview, but now it's time to take a closer and a detailed look at Gioni's slimmest phone. Cardboard glasses, wireless dongles, lots of phones and apps, all from CBIT 2014. On the show today. And Indian brands like Cellcon and Micromax are all ready to take on the Chinese onslaught. Before we head to Bangalore for CBIT 2014, a quick look at all the news from the mobile world. A surprise for all Android fanboys who wished Nokia would have picked up Android over the Windows phone platform. Nokia took less than seven months to put everything together and now is back with a bang. After Microsoft has now officially removed Nokia from the Lumia branding, your dreams of Nokia being Nokia and with Android comes true. Introducing the N1. The N1 is a tablet designed and executed completely by Nokia. The new Android tablet features a 7.9 inch display and is thinner than Apple's iPad Mini 3 at just 6.9 millimeters. The device is powered by a 64-bit quad-core Intel Atom Z3580 processor clocking at 2.4 GHz. It also features 2 GB of RAM, 32 GB storage, an 8 megapixel rear camera, a 5 megapixel front-facing camera, a universal insertion 2.0 USB-C type port and a 5300 mAh battery that Nokia says will provide up to 9 hours of usage time per charge. It runs the Android 5.0 Lollipop and ships with a special tablet version of the Z Launcher app that is exclusive to the N1. The tablet will be priced at around 250 US dollars. We aren't sure that it will make its way to India, but we are really happy that Nokia is reborn. Indian brands are all ready to take on the Chinese onslaught and are coming up with good value for money phones. One such company is Cellcon, which launched its Millennia Epic Q550. Priced at 10,000 rupees, the phone packs in a quad core processor and runs on Android KitKat. There is an 8 megapixel camera with LED flash and a 2 megapixel front facing camera. It features a 5.5 inch HD display. We will review the phone very soon on Cell Guru. And we'll kick things off out here in this, how do I call it, the circle of selfies. Very interesting little demonstration that is being put through by Gioni. We'll start from here. So this can take selfies, which is the 360 degree ecosystem around you. But even more interestingly, there are some very nice interactive ways of showing their phones. I'll show you that. And then Gioni has finally their 4G and LTE portfolio all ready for India already. So we'll start off things with Gioni. As the country gears up for 4G, so do the brands. Gioni showcased its 4G portfolio including the Gioni V6L and the P5L. Both the phones are priced economically so you can afford them when 4G spreads the swings. Like the rest of its portfolio, the Gioni V6L stays on a diet and is the slimmest of all LTE phones with a 6.9mm thickness. It features a 5-inch display and runs on the Android 4.4 OS, powered by a quad-core processor and 1GB of RAM. The phone promises to support 4G well. 
The V6L is priced at around 15,000 rupees. Other features include an 8 megapixel camera, LTE connectivity, and a 1950 mAh battery and dual SIM compatibility. The other phone is the Pioneer P5L. It is powered by a 1.2 GHz quad core chipset and runs the Android 4.4. The camera features a 5 megapixel snapper at the back. The phone includes an 1800 mAh battery. The Geoni Pioneer P5L is priced at 10,000 rupees. They also showcase the Geoni S5.5 LTE version. Why did you take part in CBIT here in India is a pretty important one because you seem to have the biggest place here. Why did you bet on this? See, as far as we are concerned, we are known for doing everything big. Okay. All That's, right. That except, is answered. Except for the phones that are a little slimmer, right? See, uh, the point is you can have big screens, but you need to have slimmer devices. Okay. Right? And as far as plugged in is concerned, uh, they, they seem to be making sense. Okay. End of three days, I'll be able to know how much sense. So, you're here, this is plugged in, part of CBIT, and you have by far the biggest exhibit area. Why do you take such a big uh, uh, place out here? What's the thought process? Rajiv, you know us. We won't do anything small. Okay, except, for your, be big. except for your phone. Except for your phone. Phones are with big screens but slim. We are on day two. What do you think? Well, it looks good. We've got a lot of people pouring in. Uh, maybe end of the event we'll come to know with our calculations whether it's really made sense or not. Okay, now this is the last and very important question. You've gone with a very different set of things you're showcasing here. Of course, your top of the line, your next big headline making phone, the S5.1. That we've done a preview and we'll be doing a bigger story. You've gone with a 4G portfolio when we're still maybe four or five months away from a really serious rollout. So why are you showcasing this? And there's another announcement that you've made that at a certain category, all your phones above that will always be 4G from now. So you're taking a big bet on 4G when even some of the very, very big companies worldwide have still not done a big bet. So why are you so gungo about it? It's very simple. We understand the market better than them. That worldwide, is worldwide. Worldwide. I mean, that's why we're number 10 globally. You've got to move up. Okay. It's only with better understanding can you do that. And as far as what you see on the 4G side, uh, you yourself said it's about four to five months away and phones are bought at least for a year. So I personally believe consumers would like to future-proof themselves. Okay. So that's the reason. So behind. when is the rollout of these? Uh, these would start uh, maybe by the, uh, would start definitely by the end of December. The first thing you notice about the S5.1 is its anorexic aspirations. Like a bad role model to the fatter kids, the 5.1, as its name implies, is ridiculously thin. It's so thin that the standard 3.5mm headphone jack barely fits into the design. The construction, like the 5.5, is all metal and glass. The edges are nicely rounded and make it easier to grasp. Even with this thinner frame, it feels good to hold in the hand, which is something Gioni should be commended for. The front houses the 4.8-inch 720p display, volume and power buttons are on the side, and the micro USB and the headphone jack are placed at the bottom. The S5.1 runs Amigo UI 2.0 on top of Android 4.4 KitKat, and as far as custom skins go, it isn't bad. You're greeted with a row of icons instead of widgets on the home screen, which makes it look very similar to iOS. All the Android functionality is there, but it's hidden away under a bunch of settings or tabs. We would have still preferred the vanilla Android experience, even if the Amigo 2.0 does a pretty good job. As with every skin, there is some bloatware here. Gioni has also added tons of extra features like the double tap to wake functionality, but we don't see too many people digging through the settings to find these. But those that will shall be rewarded with quite a few treasures. The S5.1 comes with a 1.7 GHz octa-core MediaTek chipset paired with a Mali GPU and 1 GB of RAM. And as you might expect, the performance of the phone is a mixed bag. The overall performance is decent though. The 720p 4.8 inch AMO LED panel performs well with decent viewing angles and good color reproduction. It isn't overly saturated as AMO LEDs tend to be and the colors pop well enough. The camera on the back is an 8MP snapper that does a decent job. It even captures the details in the images really well. It features 720p video recording at 30 frames per second and that's equally decent in its quality. The front camera is a 5MP shooter and as a selfie or a chat camera, it does a good job. 
The S5.1 will cost you about 20,000 rupees to own and at that price it's fairly competitive with what the competition offers. The only major competitors turn out to be Oppo and Xiaomi in this price point. The MI3 with its higher end specs and the Oppo with an even thinner chassis but the MI3 availability is an issue and there is still some controversy over whether Oppo is the thinnest. The Geoni 5.1 right now seems to win in its category and it's very very close to its claim of being the sexiest phone in the world. We now move on to our top 5 picks from CBIT 2014. by Mobiton called Dice. Now these are Bluetooth portable speakers and look how cute they are. They actually come in different colors and they remind me of Juju. So you can easily connect them using Bluetooth to any device and you can actually attach them to your phone making them very portable. My only hassle with these speakers is the fact that it costs 1500 bucks which I think is a tad bit expensive when you look at the other speakers available in the market. But they caught my eye so I thought I should talk about them. Meet Andy, the toy car with a smart twist. Andy is not just a remote controlled car but an intelligent robotic device which teams up with your smartphones to give kids a toy car experience like never before. Andy can be controlled with your Android devices but you will need two devices to get this thing going. A smartphone that sits in the driver's seat of car and acts as a receiver and another device that acts as a remote control. Getting the car working is literally child's play. All you need to do is download the Andy app from the Google Play Store on both the devices and you're set to vroom vroom. As far as the specifications of the car are concerned, it is made of acrylic, looks a tad bit fragile but it holds its ground and can survive a few drops here and there. Housing a 2200 mAh battery, the car has a life of about 4 hours before it needs to be recharged. Andy communicates with a smartphone over Bluetooth, 3G or Wi-Fi, making it feasible to control indoors and outdoors. Andy can be yours for a price of Rs 3850 a bit pricey we might add. But if you still want to take Andy out for a spin, the smartphone controlled car is available for sale on Snapdeal.com. portable charger by a company called Hippo. It's making its way into India so hopefully by December we'll see their product in the market. Now the cool thing about this product apart from the 2500 mAh capacity is the fact that it comes with a wireless dock. Now essentially this has a magnetic chip in it and you can stack up almost 10 of these chargers over the wireless dock and charge them simultaneously. You can charge up with these products with one particular device. So when they come in December, let's hope that they kind of live up to their name and the expectation. In a big fair like CBIT, people usually run after the big devices. Now at Selguru, we consider and respect the small as well. You want to check out the Chinese smartphones that are so tiny that you want to take a microscope for it. In a world where everyone wants to have a big phone, the Chinese are going the small way, like these small and cute Jimmy phones. They have a range of compact phones for everyone, from babies to grandparents. Do you see this blue small Hello Kitty like phone? This one is for your kid. It's called JI06 GPS. Yes, it has a highly sensitive GPS tracker, so you know where your kid is going exactly. Besides that, it has geofencing capabilities. This means you set boundaries around a school or a playground and you will know whenever it is trespassed. The child can make SOS calls and also comes with a do not disturb mode. The Epson Moverio BT200 is a smart glass. Before you move on and dismiss this as a Google Glass clone, in fact it is something else entirely. You see, Epson uses a specialized pair of lenses which outputs images separately for each eye. If that isn't cool enough, it runs Android 4.0. And if that still isn't cool enough, the display that you see in front of your eyes can be up to 80 inches. Not that it makes it difficult to see anything else. The AV in front of your eyes is transparent, allowing you to see the rest of your normal view in your POV. What isn't cool is that it still looks a little bulky and you have to carry around a separate controller or touchpad to actually use the glasses. What is cool is that the touchpad runs Android 4.0 so that means a lot of potential Movirio apps in the future. The glasses have sensors and the capability to view 
3D content built in, so you could run a lot of crazy AR games on your glass. The possibilities are exciting. The coolest part is the fact that you can pick one up right now. They go on sale online for $699. This is the Sail Guru Show. Welcome back at this present moment. Things are really heating up here. This is plugged in. CBIT also carrying on. We're in Bangalore to cover these two events. And right now, the party really seems to have just got started. And I'm going to take that party really forward. You've heard of Google Glass? Well, I'm going to show you the Indian version for about 1,000 rupees. Google Cardboard, a textbook example of the phrase looks can be deceptive. You think that it's just a piece of cardboard? Slip in some lenses, a magnet and your smartphone? This is now a DIY virtual reality piece. How? Well, like most things in life, you need an app for it. The Google Cardboard app. Download it on any Android phone, place your smartphone in the front of the cardboard and voila! You've got an immersive 3D experience. On the cardboard, there are various functions designed for a cool 3D experience. And guess what? We did it! Bauxite, an Indian company, has figured out a way to make this model for about 1000 odd bucks. You order a DIY kit from them and assemble it yourself like this. Slip in that phone of yours and you are set. A complete Google Cardboard experience. Google, can you see the difference? There are Velcro strips attached to the device to make sure your phone doesn't slip out of the cardboard. Now your smartphone is absolutely secure. But how do you navigate this device? Pull the magnet down to shift through options and tilt your head to select it. Cool, right? The interesting part is that besides their flagship app, you can try other third-party apps on the Google Cardboard. Like an app that leads you through spooky tunnels called the Halls of Fear. And an app that lets you watch 3D movies through this killer device. BR Cinema for Cardboard. So, now decide, will you spend money on watching a 3D film in a theater or will you simply buy the Bauxite's Google Cardboard? Data transfer is a very important part of our lives. We transfer everything from our books to our movies to our music on a day-to-day -day basis. And now that's even possible wirelessly. But that takes a lot of time. And do we really have the time to sit through all that process? The gone is the time when one movie used to be just about a GB, but now it can go up to as high as 16 GB. So if you don't want to waste all your time just waiting for your files to transfer, I have the perfect device for you that I have found at CBIT here today. Transferring data on smartphones and tablets via Bluetooth or NFC can sometimes, if not most times, be a pain. It's slow, connections are weak and you're always second guessing whether your data is completely transferred or not. But behold, we found something at CBIT 2014 that's going to change the way you transfer your data. The name says it all. Transfer Jet is a data transfer dongle that connects to your devices and transfers small to very heavy files in a matter of seconds. Transfer Jet goes beyond the call of a regular dongle by enabling data transfer between devices at a rate of, wait for it, 540 Mbps. The physical transmission rate is 560 Mbps. A 10 MB file can be transferred in less than a second. A 100 MB HD video can be transferred in 2 seconds. What does this mean? It means that no longer will you have to sit and stare aimlessly at your devices while your data transfers at turtle space. This means that now transferring all your large files, be it movies, music or documents, is quick, easy, fast and furious. Okay, maybe that's going too far. The catch is that currently you will need to bulk up your devices with the dongle. It's not the prettiest sight, but technology always comes with a price. It also does improve with time. The good news is that the company is also working towards building this tech right into the smart devices. This will essentially allow you to get rid of that dangling dongle and your devices will do all the work automatically. Neat, ain't it? That then was the Sail Guru show for the week. As you did see me say right in the beginning of the show, this is supposed to be some kind of an inspired show from Charlie's Angels. I'm so glad I didn't do that. I started off with one angel missing. I only had two. 
you can notice behind me i have none so the charlie's angels or at least my angels have left the building i think i should too we'll see you right here maybe see bit 2015 in bangalore or somewhere else here in india